Part 3. The Renewing of the Mind. Chapter 5. The News. Man is a composite of spirit, soul, and body. The Bible shows us that man has a body as well as a spirit, and a soul as well as a body and a spirit. Why are the spirit and the body insufficient? Why is there also the need for a soul? It is because the soul needs to stand between the spirit and the body to serve as a medium to both. What God wishes us to know is made known to us in the intuition of our spirit, for the spirit is the organ for God consciousness. It enables us to communicate with God and to know God. The body is given to us by God that we may be in contact with the world thus sensing all the things in the world. But the soul is created for the purpose of self-consciousness that we may be conscious of ourselves. We human beings are not like angels who are bodiless spirits. We have a spirit and a body, together with a soul which serves as a buffer between them. In this way, all which belongs to our spirit and body is being expressed through the soul. The human heart heart, according to the biblical concept, is the conscience of man's spirit plus the mind in man's soul. The spirit communes with God and is the organ for knowing his will, whereas the heart is the steward of the spirit, working towards the expression of all which is in the spirit. Whatever is in the spirit is expressed through the heart. The heart is therefore the link or the place of exchange for the workings of the spirit and of the soul. It is like the operating center of a telephone system where all the lines will converge and be connected. All that enters the spirit enters from the heart. Hence the heart is the connecting point of all communications. The spirit reaches the soul via the heart, and through the heart the soul conveys to the spirit what it has gathered from outside. The heart is where our personality is located. It is our real self. Since it is the link between the spirit and the soul, the heart may be considered as the real I. Knowing the scriptural concept of the heart, we may then judge its significance to us. Let us read a few passages from the scriptures which deal with the heart. Commune with your own heart upon your bed. And be still, Psalms 4 verse 4. In other words, the heart is myself. So that communing with one's heart suggests what is commonly known as the consultation of heart and mouth. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life, Proverb 4 verse 24. We need to do nothing else but to keep our heart for out of it come forth the issues of life. Whatever fruit we see in man is produced by the heart. Hence the heart is man's real self, ye offspring of vipers. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. The good man out of his good treasure bringeth forth good things. And the evil man out of his evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Matthew 12 verse 34 and 35 The Lord declares that out of the fullness of the heart does the mouth speak, for the heart is the man's own self. Whatever a sinner does comes from his heart. All sins issue from the heart. But the things which proceed out of the mouth come forth out of the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, railings, Matthew 15 verse 18 and 19. What springs from the heart defiles the man, for the heart is unclean. Is it not rather surprising that though man is a composite of spirit, soul, and body, Yet in regeneration God only gives us a new spirit and a new heart, but not a new soul. God gives us a new spirit so that we may commune with him by having our dead spirit quickened into functioning before him. He also gives us a new heart, 
so as to enable us to live a new life and to have a new desire. Although the heart and the spirit have a number of things in common, even so, the Bible does not mix up these two, but keeps them in their respective place. It is said in Ezekiel, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Chapter 36 verse 26 God does not say, I will give you a new spirit and a new soul, for he deems the soul to be an organ not needing to be remade. Only man's heart must be recreated, because out of it flow the issues of life. What is to be done to a believer's spirit and heart after he has sinned? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalms 51 verse 10 This verse reveals how God looks upon the heart and the spirit of a believer. If defiled, he ought to ask God to create in him a clean heart. Our heart must be clean. Our spirit must be made right. Since the Bible lays so much stress on the heart, we can see what a significant place it occupies in the Word. The heart is of exceeding importance, for it is our real self. What our heart is what we really are. It is the source of life. It includes the conscience of the spirit and the mind of the soul. We commune with God by the spirit, but what God looks at is our heart. It is the most essential factor in our lives. We say we are saved, but how are we saved after all? It is when we believe in our heart, how are we now serving God? It is serving God with the heart. Whom does God bless? Those who are upright in heart. What shall be judged in the future? God will judge the hidden things in the heart of man. For this reason, we must have a good heart when we come near to God. But a good mind is prerequisite to a good heart. And this brings us to a consideration, especially of this matter, of the mind or nose. In the New Testament word mind comes from the original Greek term nous. It is used 24 times in the entire New Testament. Let us list them as follows. Then opened he their mind, that they might understand the scriptures. Luke 24 verse 45 And even as they refused to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up unto a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not fitting. Romans 1 verse 28 But I see a different law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity under the law of sin which is in my member. Romans 7 verse 23 For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Romans 11 verse 34 Let each man be fully assured in his own mind. Romans 14 verse 5 but that ye be perfected together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 1 Corinthians Verse 10 For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he should instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians verse Ye no longer walk, as the Gentiles also walk, in the vanity of their mind. Ephesians 4 verse 17 Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Colossians 2 verse 18 That ye be not quickly shaken from your mind. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse Here is the mind that hath wisdom. Revelation 17 verse 9 I of myself with the mind, indeed, serve the law of God. Romans 7 verse 25 Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 verse 2 but my understanding is unfruitful. 1 Corinthians verse. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 15. Howbeit in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding, that I might instruct others also? than ten thousand words in a tongue. 
1 Corinthians 14 verse 19, and that ye be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4 verse 23, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Philip 4 verse 7, wranglings of men corrupted in mind and bereft of the truth. 1 Timothy 6 verse 5, men corrupted in mind, reprobate concerning the faith. 2 Timothy 3 verse 8, both their mind and their conscience are defiled. Titus 1 verse 15, he that hath understanding, let him count the number of the beast. Revelation 13 verse 18, the relation between nous and the Christian mot effect has this nous upon a Christian's life, work, service, walk, and so forth. It is an undeniable fact that all who believe in the Lord Jesus have a new spirit and a new heart. However weak or strong a believer may be, he is begotten of God and possesses a new spirit and a new heart. Hence, he can love people from the heart as well as serve God with the heart. He is able to do everything from the heart. Yet new though his heart is, the news part of it may not be renewed. According to human logic, if man's heart is made new, the conscience and mind which are included in the heart must also have been renewed. But it is not true in fact. The conscience part of the heart becomes new at the time of salvation, but it may not be always new or become daily renewed afterwards. Just as a dress when first purchased is new, it may not remain so later on. One has to perform additional work on it to keep it continually new. In like manner, the nose at the time of salvation is new, but after a while it may not stay new. Such experience is shared by many believers. Let me tell you that when a person first gets saved, his conscience is new and is restored to its proper function of hating and abhorring sin. But will this conscience always continue new? Not absolutely. For if he should sin and give ground to sin repeatedly, if he should refuse to listen to the voice of conscience, then after many instances of this his conscience will not reprove him any more. It has lost its function. Now just as it is possible for the conscience to be restored and then subsequently to lose its sensitivity, so is it possible for the mind. What is noose? What is this noose which the New Testament speaks of? We may view this subject from three different angles. Physically viewed, we may say that we human beings possess brain. Psychologically considered, we have nerves, and speaking spiritually, we have intuition. That which pertains to matter is termed the brain, and that which pertains to intellect or reasoning is called nous, though we dare not say that nous represents the whole of the mind. It certainly occupies a major part of the mind nonetheless. Through the intuition of our spirit, we receive an impression from God. By the nurse of the soul, that impression in the intuition is being interpreted and made known to us. We know the will of God through intuition, but intuition, being unrational and unsystematic, needs to be explained by the nurse. Now let us further say that man has three different organs for knowledge. In the body is the brain. In the spirit is the intuition, and in the soul is the noose. When we dissect the brain, we see nothing but the grey and white substance. And intuition is something which we sometimes sense and sometimes do not sense. At times it seems to constrain, at other times it seems to restrain. It is that entity which is deep down in us but the news stands between the intuition and the brain. It interprets the meaning in the intuition and directs the brain to express it in words. Should a believer's news be defective, and even though he has strong intuition and a good brain, his life will be lived devoid of any standard. He will spend his days foolishly, and he will not be able to express what is within him 
even at the time of preaching. All this is due to his nose not being renewed. The sinner's nose let us first consider the nose of a sinner. He has a nose which is corrupted and depraved. Romans 1 verse 28. 2 Timothy 3 verse 8. Futile and vain. Ephesians 4 verse 17. Fleshly. Colossians 2 verse 18. And defiled. Titus 1 verse 15. Such is the condition of a sinner's nose. But now you are saved. Yet if you recall your experience before you were saved, what could be said of your attitude towards God? What is the situation of a sinner's nose before him? Suppose that here is a most foolish sinner who knows almost nothing, but as you start to talk to him about God, he will oppose you with all sorts of arguments. He will insist that there is no God. You will be surprised at this assertion of a fool. Why does he so speak? Because his mind is darkened. His new is darkened and dead. His spirit is completely in the dark. He has no way to know God and is totally unable to understand the way of God. What makes him raise all these arguments against God? His depraved, futile and defiled nose. Such is the situation of the foolish man. But how about the cleverest of men, the one who can discuss God philosophically? He professes to know everything, yet he will not believe in God. He tries to find many reasons to refute him. He opposes God as much as the fool, though the wise and the fool are worlds apart in hundreds of things. In the matter of not believing in God, they perfectly agree. This is due to no other cause than that the noose in both of them is darkened and their spirit is dead. Their new being dead, they are unable to receive the light of God. Their thoughts become wild and irregular. Hence, God declares in the case of those perishing that the God of this world hath blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should not dawn upon them. 2 Corinthians verse Nous and salvation is meant by being saved. It simply means knowing God. And this is life eternal, that they should know thee the only true God, and him whom thou didst send, even Jesus Christ. John verse Eternal life is the ability of knowing God. Being saved does not mean one can talk about certain doctrines. It is having a living knowledge of God. Should we ask the most intelligent and learned man in the world to converse with a young believer who is newly saved? The first man may raise hundreds of arguments to oppose God and to which the second man has no answer. Nevertheless, the young believer can say, I know I have eternal life. I know I am saved. Such is the difference between them. The new of an unbeliever is blocked. It is in lack of light. But at the moment he is saved, his nose receives light, thus knowing God. Many have their eyes opened when they hear the powerful gospel for the first time. They know they are sinners, and they know Jesus Christ is their Savior though they are still unable to explain intelligently their experience. They nonetheless do have the knowledge of knowing that they have been enlightened and that they are now saved. This knowing is the work of the nose. What God has given to our intuition is communicated to the brain through the nose. To the spiritual, as soon as there is the movement of God in his intuition, it is instantly registered in his nose and carried out by his brain. Upon our being saved, we possess a special kind of knowledge that we may know God. Intuition, news, and brain work jointly and simultaneously. Only for the sake of clarity have we described them separately. Chapter 6 The Renewing of the News Our news is enlightened at the time we are saved. Often we assume that a new heart is enough for us not knowing that the Bible says our news needs to be renewed, even though our news becomes new at regeneration, has it been renewed forever afterwards? 
I am afraid the norse of many saved ones has not been renewed. Things remain the same as before conversion. I must say frankly that the thoughts in many believers today are not very different from that of sinners. How frequently I have the feeling that though the spirit and the heart of many believers are new, their nurse lacks renewal and acts like that of sinners. How can a believer expect to be of any use in God's hand if his news has not been renewed? Our news must not only be new, but also be daily renewed. Today's defect lies here. At the moment we are saved, we receive a tremendous revelation. Yet after being saved, our news is not renewed. Salvation becomes the greatest revelation of our lives. But do we continuously receive other great revelations subsequently? I am afraid many do not have any further great revelations after that of salvation. The revelation of salvation is without question the greatest revelation in life for it brings us into eternity. But do we experience other new revelations? Why is it that because of the enlightenment of our first believing in the Lord, we are able to confess our sins, to brave persecutions, to endure opposition from relatives as well as from the world, and to forsake the world? Oh. It is because this news has enabled us to know salvation and to live in newness of life, and were the light of this news to shine in our lives daily, we would live a life of true enlightenment all along the line. There was once a woman who loved the world most dearly. She could not forsake it for anything. One day she heard a man preaching in the church hall. The preaching was in no way exceptional, but the scripture he read was as follows. And this is the victory that hath overcome the world, even our faith. First John verse. This word captured her heart. She heard that man mention this word seven or eight times. Never before did she know what the world was. But that day she saw through the world. She crushed it to pieces on the very same day. Such knowing as this is the knowledge of the news. Many are unable to cast things off because their nose lacks the light to see through these things. In addition, if our nose does not cooperate, our hearing the word and our service will be of no avail. Every time we hear the word, we need the cooperation of the nose. Before we are saved, we refuse to believe, in spite of strong persuasion. But one day, we believe because our nose begins to know and that we cannot overturn, knowing the only true God, and knowing Jesus Christ whom God has sent. This is eternal life. The conditions of the unrenewed Nauswat are the conditions of an unrenewed Nus. We may view them from three sides, towards men, towards God, and towards self. We shall see how an unrenewed news affects man in his attitude and reaction in these three directions. 1. The unrenewed news towards men. If a person's news is not renewed, he will have very inaccurate ideas about others. A strange attitude which emerges is that he can never trust anybody. He is always suspicious. All the observations which come out from him are critical and hair-splitting. He inclines to denigrate other people's worth. Simply by asking myself how I think of others, a person can pretty much assess the state of his nose. The Bible reveals that the Lord Jesus never judges by what his eyes see and his ears hear, for he always decides everything by his spiritual sense. How nowadays, though, Believers judge others on the basis of sight and sound. If we would test everything, as Paul did, we would be much happier. There is a verse in Philemon, which is most precious, hearing of thy love, and of the faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus, and toward all the saints. Verse 5. If any believer lowers the value of others, his nose is unquestionably defective. Let us therefore ask ourselves, do we always devalue other people? I knew a brother 
who had the habit of estimating gifts given him at lower than their original price. For example, if someone gave him a gift which was worth two dollars, he would estimate it as being worth only thirty cents. Or if he was given a thirty dollar gift, he would declare its value to be only a little more than ten dollars. Innumerable believers think in the same way. Why? Because their nous is old and worldly. People of this world always think poorly of others. Others are suspected of harboring unuttered words behind the words actually spoken, just like meat which is enclosed in dumplings. Christians ought not think this way. If they do, it just proves that their nous is not yet renewed, and so Satan can work in their mind. Because an unrenewed new serves as an operation center for the enemy, whatever belongs to Adam becomes natural ground for satanic working. Two, the unrenewed news towards God. By noticing the following characteristics, the unrenewed news of a believer may be detected. He is unable to put his trust in God, nor is he able to know God as he has once known the Lord Jesus as his Savior. He is full of doubts. He doubts the power, the wisdom, and the love of God. These three points summarize his attitude towards God. He doubts God's power, wondering if he is able. He doubts God's wisdom, thinking he might be wrong, and he doubts God's love. Newsing that he is not willing. Moreover, this believer cannot understand the Bible nor God's teaching. His news is obstructed. He is unable to receive God's light therein. Actually, he was enlightened at the time he was saved, and had his news been open daily to God thereafter, he today would not be so powerless and so tense as he is. If all of us had an unveiled news. We would receive much light. Our news is defective if we ourselves do not receive something new from God, but can only pass on that which we have received from others. I do not say that we should not have others to help us. I myself am most happy to receive help from other people. I only say that if we are not able to receive something directly from God, ours is defective. Our news must be enlightened by God, and then our message will, in turn, enlighten the nous of other people and really help them. It is for this reason that I have said that each one himself needs to receive something from God in his nous. One whose news is not renewed does not know the will of God. He may reach his conclusion by means of logic, but he is unable to know God's will with his nous. He ought to know the will of God, just as at the time of salvation he knew Christ as the Son of God, as well as he knew himself to be a saved person. Knowing God's will should be an inward knowledge. Oftentimes we know it, but are unable to explain it. If a newly believing country peasant is brought before an unbelieving intellectual. He may be subjected to hours of attack upon his faith without his knowing how to refute the assault. Yet the believing peasant can still say he knows he is saved. This is the way of knowing God's will. Today, so many people do not know the will of God. I conclude that it is due to a deficiency in the organ for knowing God's will. The Lord's Day is considered the busiest one in the radio industry. Many large church groups in Europe and America broadcast their sermons. These radio waves reach far and wide. Why is it that we here in China do not hear them? The only reason is the lack of powerful enough radio receivers. In like manner, the will of God is most distinct and clear, but due to a deficiency in the organ for receiving it, some. Are unable to know His will. I have said before that a believer is capable of knowing God's will, just as he is able to distinguish wheat from tares. Why then do some not know, due to their lack of a renewed news? What about our thoughts? They are corrupted. After we are saved, we Christians concede that we should have good hearts. 
we offend God if we have any hate or sin in our heart. We thus remind ourselves to always keep the heart from error. But we forget that our thoughts must also be good. Our minds, our speech, our concern and outlook the same as before we were saved. I do not wish to probe into the motive and intent of the heart. I only ask if our mind has undergone a change. How strange that after we are saved our mind is as confused as before. There is no change in our speech and thought. If we do not overcome in thought, we will be thoroughly defeated. Once a sister wrote to another sister, If Satan can seize our thought life, he will capture all of our life. This is a fact. For such a word is spoken out of more than fifty years of deep experience before God. Brethren, think not that good intention is enough if our thought and our evaluation towards men and events remain unchanged after we are saved. We are still in the grip of the enemy and have no way to overcome Satan. 3. The unrenewed news towards self. A. Cannot control our thoughts. To those who have an unrenewed news, they have absolutely no control over their own thought. Many Christians have wasted their power of thinking. If our hands can do only eight hours of work, but these hours are spent in doing irregular things, we are not only wasting our strength, we are neglecting our regular work as well. Similarly, if we squander our mental power on meaningless and improper things, we will not be able to think on the right things. One brother asked me why he could not concentrate. He said that after praying for five minutes, his mind began to roam. I asked him in return if his thought wandered only in prayer or did this happen throughout the day. I could answer for him that his thoughts must have been scattered and must have wandered around the world during the whole day. How then could he concentrate in prayer when his mind was so confused during the twelve hours of the day? He was not able to conceive one good thought from morning till night. Consequently, a believer whose nose is not renewed is unable to control his thought. May I therefore say emphatically that such a one is not of much use in God's hand. To become good believers, Christians need to have their nose renewed. B. Introspective. One of the greatest ills in a believer is to be introspective. He may fancy introspection as good, but it never really helps him to know himself. No one ever arrives at self-knowledge by looking inwardly into himself. Self-knowledge comes only through God's light. It is in his light that we see like, see Psalms verse. All self-criticism and self-analysis, whether it commends or condemns self, will bring unrest to the mind. It will not be right for me to secretly compare myself to other people. Each time a believer looks into himself, his progress is arrested. Just imagine how one would have to stand still if he desired to look at himself while walking. He cannot proceed on his way and at the same time look at himself. All who turn to look at themselves will either become immobilized or turn backwards. This is especially true in spiritual progress. Whoever turns inwardly upon himself will become greatly discouraged. He will put himself in danger if there is no one to help him on. He may even imagine that he has not been saved or that he has committed the unpardonable sin. He may be deceived into surmising that God has forsaken him. Such would be the consequence of an unrenewed news. Or C. Unable to communicate God's word. If our new is not renewed, we will not be able to impart to other people what God has given us. Some believers are quite conversational. They have the right words for hundreds of matters which they enjoy explaining or describing. They may be called eloquent. But when the conversation turns upon spiritual matters, they are unable to elucidate even one of them. Why is this so? It is because their mind is not usable to God. 
Their mind is as weak as a child's arm which cannot lift ten pounds. Although they may have many thoughts, their thoughts are so confused that they do not know which come from God and which do not. They themselves understand what they have received intuitively, but they do not possess the ability to interpret their intuitive knowledge and communicate to others. All this is due to the lack of renewal in their nose. God will, of course, give utterance if he wishes people to speak his word. Still, without a renewed noose, none can express what he has inwardly received. A believer needs a renewed noose to guide him in his daily walk, otherwise he will suffer a great deal of loss. He may misunderstand people, he may not know God's will, and he may even misuse himself. And so he is not able to live well. Hence, we all must seek to experience this step of the renewing of the new. All the people of this world are divided into the saved and the unsaved, the regenerated and unregenerated, those who are in Christ and those who are in Adam. Such difference is absolute and distinctive. Likewise, the nas of all believers can be divided into the renewed and the unrenewed, and this difference is also clearly defined. Being saved, we need to have our nas renewed, and not just once, but renewed daily. Once Dwight L. Moody was walking on the street, he suddenly requested a homeowner to permit him to use his upper room. He was given permission. Moody went to the upper room and prayed, O oh God, stay your hand, for it is more than I can bear. If we have our nose daily renewed, we shall find that what God has given to our nose is more than we can contain. Let me say again that this renewing of the nose is to be specifically sought after just as we have in the past sought for new birth. Just as new birth has changed our life, so this renewed new shall transform our daily living. Do not think that the naturally clever person progresses faster in the knowledge of God than the naturally dull. If spiritual progress is to be measured by natural wisdom, the whole thing falls into the realm of the flesh. Your progress has nothing to do with your natural wisdom. If your news has been renewed, you will be able to know God and the things of God. The cleverest person beside you may not comprehend what you have comprehended. Consequently, seek earnestly for the renewing of your news, else you will not be able to carry on spiritually. Before you were saved, you did not love people. Yet now, since you have believed in the Lord, you make great strides in loving them. If such a phenomenon fails to appear, I doubt whether you are really saved. If you are truly saved, you will be different with respect to such matters as loving people, being patient, and serving others from the heart. Formerly, you liked to be great. Now you are willing to bear and forbear. All this is due to your having a new heart. Other people will also notice your change. They will acknowledge that you are different from what you were before. Nonetheless, I would ask you if your mind is also transformed. Are you more able to concentrate and to think systematically, or does your mind remain unchanged? Should the latter be the case, this indicates that your new has not been renewed. A believer be he wise or dull, ought to have a better news as well as a better heart. God is no respecter of persons. He will destroy the wisdom of the wise and set aside the cleverness of the clever. He puts the wise and the dull on the same footing. The nurse of the wise needs renewal as much as the nurse of the dull. Only after your nose is renewed, Will you be able to know God and His will and to see and interpret what He has shown you? Thus will you advance in the course which lies ahead of you. Indeed, the difference between a renewed and an unrenewed nose is as the difference between a shiny glass window and a dirty glass window. The unrenewed nose of a believer is unable to think and to do what the renewed nose is capable of thinking and doing. 
His renewed noose will increase at least several times its thinking capability. Its power of thinking will be greatly improved, so that the difference between a renewed noose and an unrenewed one is as the difference between life and death, heaven and earth. Were we to deal with our noose in the same fervor as once we sought salvation, we would live under an open heaven. Chapter 7 The known and the spirit. God communicates with us in our spirit, not through our soul and body. We ought to maintain an open and sensitive spirit before him in order to maintain living communication with him. But what we are concerned with now is the relationship between our spirit and the nose. Whenever there is a closed nose, there is a closed spirit. If the nose is closed, God's light will not be imparted to the spirit, for there will be no outlet for whatever the spirit may obtain. In other words, if the mind of a Christian is defective, his spirit will follow suit, not so with the body. A Christian may be ill physically, yet his sickness may not affect his spirit. Many Christians lie in bed throughout the year. Even so, they are still able to sense God's will, to be obedient to him and to do the work of prayer. But when a Christian's noon is impaired, his spirit will invariably be marred for the first has an instant effect on the second. There are two passages in the Bible which tell us of the need of having our nose renewed. Without its renewal, we believers will find it difficult to go on with the Lord. Let us look at the first of these two passages, the second of which we shall deal with in the next chapter. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye no longer walk as the Gentiles also walk, in the vanity of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, alienated from the light, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardening of their heart, who being past feeling, gave themselves up to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye did not so learn Christ, if so be that ye heard him, and were taught in him, even as truth is in Jesus, that ye put away, as concerning your former manner of life, the old man, that waxeth corrupt after the lusts of deceit, and that ye be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new man, that after God hath been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. Ephesians 4 verse 17 to 2004 Noose is twice mentioned in this passage, and this is what we will take note of. The word understanding in verse 18 in the original is dianoia. It comes from the same root in Greek as nous, with a slight variation. What is the difference between nous and noia? Nous is the organ, while noia is the function, just as the eye is an organ, while seeing is its function. Hence verse 17 speaks of the nature of this organ of nose. But verse 18 describes the condition of its functioning. Alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardening of their heart. Verse 18. The heart here is our real self, our very personality, who being past feeling. Verse 19. It means being numbed, that is, insensitive. Such a term is often used medically. All physicians will tell us that some wounds can be so painful that they may reach the point of numbness in the patients. Though their wounds are still putrefying, they no longer sense the pain. Similarly, people's hearts can be so hardened as to be void of any feeling that you put away as concerning your former manner of life the old man, that waxeth corrupt after the lusts of deceit. Verse 22, this means that having heard the truth in Jesus, you have already put off your old man. Hence you should do what is described from verse 25 onward, that ye be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 23, 
This continues to tell what the believers have already possessed in Christ according to the truth in Jesus. We not only have put off the old man, but we also have the spirit of our nose constantly renewed. The spirit of our nose needs constant renewal, just as the old man is forever corrupting. Put on the new man, that after God hath been created in righteousness and holiness of truth, verse 24, this contrasts with verse 22. It also tells us of what is factual in the Lord. Thus verses 22 to 24 speak of the accomplished facts we have in Christ. Whereas from verse 25 onward, there is the charge as to how we should conduct ourselves hereafter. This passage therefore shows us three important things. Our spiritual life, our heart and our news. The heart is first corrupted let us. Now concentrate on what verses 17 and 18 say. The nurse of the Gentiles is vain, and the heart is so corrupted that it has no more feeling. But how does all this begin? If we know in what part corruption has its start, we will be able to deal with that particular part. Is it the news of man, the life of man, or the heart of man which is first corrupted? If the root of all ills is found to be the heart, then we will deal first with the heart. If it is the news, then let us deal first with the nose. And if it is the life, then we must deal first with the life. The two verses reveal the order of our fall. The apostle exhorts the believers not to walk as the Gentiles, who walk in the vanity of their nose. This vain nose is what is commonly termed building castles in the air. Why should we not so walk? Because their noia understanding is darkened. Why is their noia darkened? Because they are alienated or excluded from the life of God. And why is their life alienated from the life of God? Because of the ignorance in them, the hardness of their heart. Consequently, we discover that the disease begins with the heart. It is due to the hardening of the heart that life is alienated from God, and because of the alienation from the life of God, the noia is darkened. Brothers and sisters, all the corruption of man is in the heart. I often tell my fellow workers that it is the heart, not the head, which is corrupted. People usually think it is man's head, which is so. But I say no, it is the heart which is corrupted. The Gentiles will not believe in their hearts. Do you know why Gentiles will not believe in the Lord Jesus but will raise up many arguments instead? Is it because we do not have good reasons for them to believe in God and in Christ? Not at all. We have very good reasons. But the psalmist says, The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. Psalms 14 verse 1. It is not that his mind is inadequate, but that his heart says there is no God. The Lord Jesus told the Jews when they did not believe in him, Ye do not wish to come to me, that ye may have life. John 5 verse 40. Literal. It is a matter of the heart, not of reasoning. It is the heart which will not believe. Some people give assent to the many reasons I give them as to why there is a God and why the Lord Jesus is the Saviour. Yet they do not then believe in God and in the Lord. Jesus, this proves that the heart, not the head, is wrong. It is for this reason that Paul says that but the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Romans 10 verse 10. The Lord Jesus tells us that whoever does not doubt in his heart but shall believe that what he saith cometh to pass, he shall have it. Mark verse 23. The head is not the real problem. It is enough if the heart believes. This heart is our real self, our personality. Hence the Bible speaks of an evil heart of unbelief. Hebrews 3 verse 12. It does not speak of a wicked unbelieving head. It is the heart, not the head, which is corrupted. Thus the Gentiles will not believe unto salvation. Man's news is darkened 
because his heart is what is first corrupted. A Christian's heart and his nalsis is true not only of the Gentiles. It is also true with the Christian. Many Christians do not know God's will, cannot obey him, and are unable to understand the Bible simply because something is wrong with their hearts. A defective new is but a symptom. A wrong heart is the cause of that symptom. I do not say the news is entirely free from ailment, but here I wish to emphasize that the heart must be sick first. If the heart is corrected, the function of the nose will also be corrected. It is futile to deal with the symptom. It is effective only when the cause is touched. Let us now briefly consider a few instances in which we can see that if the heart is corrected, a defective nose will be made right. 1. In the matter of obedience, let us, for example, take up the issue of baptism. The Holy Scriptures have given us clear and exact revelation on baptism. Yet why is it that many believers do not act in obedience to the teaching of the Scriptures but raise up many opposing views instead? The cause lies in the heart, not in the head. Upon hearing a message on how baptism is scriptural and is that which God has distinctly asked people to do, a believer should go to God praying, O oh God, if this thing is of you, I am willing to obey. As he searches the Bible, he shall know God's will and obey him. But what if another believer dismisses this as nonsense after he has heard? Even if he should read the pertinent scripture passages afterwards, he will not understand. For when he listens to anyone preaching this truth, his is the reaction of a lawyer in the court. The first thought of a lawyer is how to refute the other party. He does not inquire if the opposite party has good reason. He only drills in his reason. Hence many questions are raised through a wrong motive of the heart. 2. In the matter of listening to a message, in listening to a message, when we hear being preached something different from what we believe, we should ask God whether what is preached is wrong. If it is not, then we should inquire of him as to the reason we are mistaken. Our hearts are right if we are able to be humble and teachable before God, even though our thoughts may be misled for a time that will soon be corrected. But if our hearts are otherwise inclined, we wish only to argue, then we will find one or two verses in the Bible to oppose what is preached to us. Many Christians read their Bible as lawyers study the law. They aim at protecting their own interests, so that it is again the heart and not the head which is wrong, and not because they cannot think, but because their hearts are already evilly inclined. Thus they drag their minds as well as their whole beings into the danger zone. 3. In the matter of studying the Bible, are there brothers and sisters in our midst who have the brains yet do not know the Bible? I say, we do not know the Bible because our hearts are defective, for the Holy Spirit will guide us into all the truths. I wonder why some people cannot understand the scriptures. If it is not because of the wrong inclination of their heart, what else can it be? Some perhaps are too subjective to have the light of God's word shine upon their news. Nonetheless, it is the heart which is first corrupted because the news follows suit. A prejudiced heart corrupts the mind. Some have suggested that the fall of Eve recorded in Genesis did not start at the moment she ate the forbidden fruit, but began instead with her wrong heart desire, so that when she was talking with Satan, her heart was already dissatisfied with God and hence already corrupted. Genesis 6 therefore states that Jehovah saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 5. The nose is evil because the heart is first corrupted. A brother once pointed out that before Eve ate the forbidden fruit she had already fallen. 
for in her conversation with Satan, she added, neither shall ye touch it to the word of God. This indicates that her heart was already evilly inclined. God did not say the imagination of man's thoughts was evil till in Genesis, for it is the heart which first is evilly inclined, next man is alienated from the life of God, and finally his imagination and thoughts are corrupted. A Christian whose heart is right is able to receive God's light from the Bible, to easily know the will of God, and to obtain from him the most abundant grace. For in the matter of listening to others, by holding conversation with a person one may detect whether that person's mind is right or wrong. The one who is able to listen has a sound mind. The mind of certain Christians is like a wheel which endlessly rotates all day long. He is not able to listen to and absorb what people have said to him. His mind will only raise questions rather than receive the truth. Such a condition proves that his mind is wrong, and a wrong mind simply shows a diseased heart. Sometimes a person likes to cut in during conversations and cut off other people's words. This too reveals a heart full of problems. Now even though it is allowable occasionally to cut in and to add a word or two during conversation, to express approval or disapproval. The one who frequently does this shows evidence of serious heart trouble. Your noose must be defective. If the thoughts of your head rotate unceasingly all the day through, in such a condition, you are unable to hear what God says to you or what other people say to you. And the reason for this sickness lies in your heart. It is because you have a heart of self-complacency, self-reliance, or self-cleverness, harboring preconceived thoughts. Naturally, you are not able to hear another's words. This disability of hearing is a symptom of a defective news, which in turn is due to a wrong heart. We know that whatever we have heard from the outside has to be delivered to the inside. Only in this way shall we ever understand what is heard. Such work of delivering or conveying is similar to doing translation. If a person does not understand the English he has heard, he needs someone to translate it into Chinese. And this translation work takes place very quickly within us. Now in case a person does not understand what he has heard, it is due to the failure of the nose to translate. If he has heard and heard wrongly, it shows that the news has interpreted wrongly. Once I was preaching at a certain place, I told the audience that we were saved by what Christ had accomplished for us, not by our own works. In the audience were two Taoists who told others afterwards that what I had preached was nothing but persuading people to do good. Many cannot accept God's word because their inside is already filled to capacity. They will never be able to understand the word of God if what is already within is not cleared out. Our heart before God must be like an infant's, humbly teachable. Our prayer ought to be, O oh God, I do not know whether the word preached is good or bad, right or wrong. I only ask that you give me a judgment that I may know what is right and what is wrong. With such an attitude, we shall see what God wants us to see. Many think they do not understand the truth because their mind is inadequate, not realizing that the root cause is their wrong heart. I've, in the matter of thoughts, some minds think too much, while some are too vacuous. At times people are too keen to think. At other times they are too dull to do any thinking at all. In general, the mind of a Christian is in either of these two states. If it is not turning endlessly in thought, then it is without any thought whatsoever. Some believers are so poor in memory that they depend on their written memoranda by which to live. I personally am not against using memos. But if a believer has to depend on such a device daily to help him remember, something is wrong with his mind. 
believers should not be slaves to their memo pads. So said Jesse Penlivis. Now, of course, we all sometimes forget. Certain things do not leave very deep impressions on our mind, and therefore they are soon forgotten. This is natural, but should the impression be deep enough, and still we cannot remember, something must be wrong. Unable to remember and overly forgetful are both abnormal states. Any person who cannot think is defective in his mind, except we are paralyzed, we can use our hands and feet. In like manner, unless the mind is sick, we ought to be able to use it. A person becomes passive in his mind if he cannot think anything voluntarily, but has to be ordered to do so by outside people. A believer's mind is sick if he is unable to think. His mind is equally sick if he always thinks. An inability to initiate thinking and an inability to stop thinking are both improper. The minds of some are so dull through bondage that they cannot think of anything, while the minds of others are so active that they cannot call a halt at all to their thinking. Both alike are sick. The danger of an unrenewed nausea have briefly mentioned only some of the symptoms of a sick nurse. All of these can be traced to the heart. Many find their mind dull and despondent because their heart is lazy. It is similar to patients who love to be sick after a long period of illness. They would rather be ill than to arise and work. When a person's mind is tired and overworked, he can no longer think. He needs proper rest. But if he never likes to work, it reveals how lazy his heart must be. Thinking too much or thinking not at all is evidence of a defective noose, which in turn is evidence of a wrong heart. In Ephesians 4, the apostle declares that due to the hardening of their hearts, the Gentiles are alienated from the life of God, and God's light is unable to shine upon their noose. Without the light of God's life, their noose becomes vain, and the functioning of their noose is darkened. But their noose falls into such a terrible state because their heart is hardened. Such is the situation of the Gentiles. The danger which believers face before God is to fall into the same predicament as have the Gentiles. Chapter 8. The Way of Renewing We will now ask ourselves, how can the noose be renewed? We have a new life. We have a new heart. Our new has been renewed and enlightened by God at least once. Our present need is to have our moose open to God daily to receive all which is of Him, to know His will, to comprehend His heart, and to understand His teaching. Brethren, do you want to know God's will, God's heart, the teaching of the Bible? If you really desire this, your news must be renewed. In our passage from Ephesians, the Apostle instructs us that, having heard him and having been taught the truth in Jesus, we must practice what we have learned. Therefore the exhortations from verse 25 onward are all based on the teaching of verses 20 to 24. In other words, verses 20 to 24 show us the position which a Christian has in the Lord, while the verses from 25 onward tell us of the conduct which a Christian who possesses such a position must have in the world. So far as fact goes, we in the Lord have already put off the old man. But this does not mean that in experience we will no more see the shadow of the old man. Positionally, our noose is already made new. But this too does not imply that our mind does not need to be continually renewed. On the contrary, the renewing of the news is a constant need. Put away the old man, put away. As concerning your former manner of life, the old man that waxeth corrupt after the lusts of deceit, and that ye be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4, 22 and 23. The spirit of the news shows the special relation between the news and the spirit. 
In order for the spirit of our nose to be renewed, we need to put away the old man. If we have not experientially put away the old man, we will not be able to experience the continual renewing of the mind. Putting away the old man is something specific. If a believer wishes to ask himself whether or not his nose is renewed, he need only ask whether he has once irrevocably put away, as concerns his manner of life, the old man and put on the new man. Accordingly, this passage shows us that we must put away the old man specifically if we wish to have our mind and nose renewed and to assure continual renewal. There needs to be a persistent putting away of the old man. Just as in undressing ourselves, we decide to lay aside our clothes, so we must exercise our will to cast the old man away. Whatever belongs to the old man, be it word or thought or act, must be continually rejected, whether it is sin or uncleanliness or self. It needs to be denied. On the other hand, we must also ask definitely and trust wholeheartedly that the Holy Spirit would renew our nose. This renewing of the nose is the work of the Holy Spirit. If we get rid of the obstacle by putting away the old man and then trust the Holy Spirit for the work of renewing, he will do it for us. I wish to draw your attention to one thing. What is said in Romans 6 concerning the old man is different from what is said here. Romans 6 speaks of the accomplished fact in the Lord, saying that our old man was crucified. Thus it requires us to reckon, that is to say, to believe. Here, however, it does not deal with the fact of having been crucified. Instead, it considers the fact of putting away. Having been crucified is something to believe, hence it is a matter of faith. Putting away, on the other hand, is a matter of will. For us to put away something it requires us to exercise the will. We must therefore not only believe that our old man was crucified, but also cast aside this old man of ours with a special show of our will. It will not be successful if we merely have the faith, but not the will to put away the old man. Will is as necessary as our faith. Deal with sin in the heart and other things should also be noticed since all defects of the norm come from the heart of man. A prejudiced heart must be corrected before the nose can be renewed. An abnormal heart can hinder the light of God. Just as a leaf may block out the light, so a little sin can cover up God's light. Many have had sin in their hearts. With such sin properly dealt with, the heart turns right, and the believer may thereafter know the will of God. Anyone who does not know God's will finds his heart being corrupted first. Who is the man whom God can teach? The one who is willing to say to him, O oh God, I thank you if you will teach me now, but even if you will not teach me at this moment, I am willing to let it pass. He who is teachable before God will, when he listens to a message, inquire of God in this manner. O oh God, am I wrong? Is what is preached right? Listening to a message can very well test the correctness of the heart. What is most precious in a renewed noose is that it may either open or close your thought. A renewed noose is able, as to God, to know God's will, is able, as to self, to control one's own thought, is able, as to others, to discuss and to understand what is said. Put on the new man and put on the new man, that after God hath been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. Verse 24. This refers to positive conduct. If we wish to have a renewed no and have it always renewed, we need to put on the new man experimentally. This, too, is an act of will. What is meant by putting on the new man? Our new man is created in righteousness and holiness of truth according to the image of God. In short, the characteristics of this new man are righteousness and holiness of truth. Righteousness pertains to the way of God, while holiness refers to God's nature. 
God is known in three different aspects, glory, holiness, and righteousness. Glory points to God himself, holiness refers to God's nature, and righteousness indicates his way of doing things. It is quite true that we are created in God's image. But this is restricted to God's righteousness and holiness. We cannot share in God's glory, since glory is his divinity, but we shall have God's holiness and righteousness. For us to be like him, we must let God's nature work in us and work according to his way. How many believers today have a deep sense of sin? I am ashamed to confess that my sensitivity towards sin is not deep enough. Miss Barber was one who really knew what sin is and what the holiness of God is. You might be proud and jealous all your life without ever realizing what pride and jealousy actually were until you came before this sister. You would then become aware of what you had before been unconscious of. She hated sin most vehemently and dealt with it more skillfully. Since she was so intensely strict with herself, she could be most candid with others. As soon as you came into her presence, you were made to see what pride and jealousy in fact were. The sister really knew God. Many times we may not learn the truth from what is preached, but we do learn it from what is lived. If you pass over a sin the first time, and the next time, and the time after that, you will lose the sense of sin. But if you call sin a sin and deal with it properly in the first instance, you will be able to deal with it in the next. All who do not know what sin is, do not know what holiness is. For holiness is the knowledge of sin. Before Adam and Eve sinned, their status was neutral, not holy. Only by knowing sin were they brought to understand the meaning of holiness. What is unrighteousness? What ought not be done is unrighteousness. I did not know what unrighteousness was till I read a story in the paper. A certain man went to hear another man preach in the church. When the preacher finished his message, he came down from the platform and sat by him. But in getting to his seat, the preacher unwittingly stepped on the raincoat belonging to a lady in the first row. He kicked it aside without trying to wipe off the dirt, nor did he apologize to the owner of the raincoat. The other man offered a judgment on the incident by saying how unrighteous the preacher was. What is unrighteousness? It is owing people something. If you will not repay the lady, you should at least try to clean the coat for her. Otherwise, you will always owe her something before God. In view of this, our news is closely related to our life before God. Whenever we pass over a sin, we are unrighteous. We cannot commune with God and at the same time our news be darkened. Believers ought, on the negative side, to put away all uncleanness, perverse intention and unrighteousness and ought, on the positive side, to put on the new man. Brethren, we must pass through this door. The renewal of the news is something which we have to deal with specifically. Do not think that we will grow into it gradually. The relationship between nose and spirit quite some years ago I read in a magazine. These words written by Jesse Penelworth. If your spirit is closed, it is because your nose is closed. In other words, the spirit is closed due to a closed noose. At that time, I knew immediately how precious were these words, though I did not see their accuracy until later because of the shallowness of my spiritual life then. It is quite true that a person's spirit is closed if his nose is closed, because spirit expresses its thought through the nose. If the nose is blocked, the spirit will have no outlet. We may use the electric current as an example. Powerful though it may be, the current cannot give light to people if the filament in the electric bulb is broken. It is not that the power company produces no electricity, not at all. 
It is simply because the current cannot extend itself out through the bulb. Even so, if our noose is closed, the spirit has no way and no power to express itself. I really do not know how I should speak so as to help us into this deep truth that we may receive the renewing of our nous. I do not suggest that our mind may help in God's work, for this will only be the power of the soul. I must say, however, that if a believer's nous is not renewed, his spirit has no way out, and accordingly God cannot use him. Peter explained that the disciples on the day of Pentecost were not drunk at all. If they were drunk, their minds would not be clear, and if their minds were not clear, they would not have open spirits and so be used of God. So far as I know, all who are greatly used by God are people whose spirit, knows, understanding, thought, and thinking are clear. Whether or not they have great knowledge is another matter, for not all who are used by God possess great knowledge. If our news is renewed, our understanding will be keen. We shall know the will of God, the mind of God, and the word of God. Consecration and the renewing of the Nausle now come to the second passage in the Bible which tells us of the need of having renewed. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. And be not fashioned according to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 the word mind here is news in the original. Once again, it is the renewing of the news. Paul beseeches believers to present their bodies to God in order to serve him. The renewing of the news is based on consecration. Friends, is there anything which holds you down? If you are able to consecrate it by laying it all on the altar, your renewed news will be doubly strengthened by God for you to know his heart and will as well as to think and understand the things of God. You must make this transaction specifically, then you will be able to prove what is the acceptable will of God. Many announce generally that they are willing to obey God in all things, yet the fact remains they know not what they are saying because they are far from such perfect obedience. At the time when the Lord was soon to die, Peter boldly announced, even if I must die with thee, yet will I not deny thee, Matthew verse. Many are like Peter. We do not know what God requires of us, hence we will not grow spiritually. To determine the degree of spiritual progress of a believer, one need only inquire what God presently requires of him. For instance, to a sinner newly saved, God's requirement of him may be to forsake smoking gambling, and other external matters. We know that this is but the first step in spiritual life, for there is not much depth to this. Gradually, the new believer will be shown in addition that jealousy, pride, and things of this nature are likewise bad. He is therefore making further progress. Still later, he is instructed by God that he must lay down his own opinion in God's work. This indicates another step forward. In a word, the requirement of God goes deeper all the time. Some Christians know they should not smoke or gamble. Others know they ought not be proud or jealous, but these know nothing else. We should offer to God according to what we know, and thus shall our noose be renewed. But at the same time, our renewed noose will tell us what we ought even further to offer to God. After a the nose of too many Christians is like a kitchen window which is covered with oily dirt. After the nose is renewed, though, it becomes like a clean window which clearly lets in the sunlight. The believer is able to comprehend more and more 
what God requires of him. His news has become most keen and alert. He can plainly know what God's requirement is. The reason many Christians do not know the will of God is because they do not have the proper receiving set. They can only guess and surmise what God's will is. But if their nose is renewed, they will be able to know clearer and clearer the will of God. 1. For example, as to judgment, one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let each man be fully assured in his own mind. Romans 14 verse 5. The mind here is nose. How do you judge right and wrong? Each judges according to his own nose. 2. As to understanding, then opened he their mind, that they might understand the scriptures. Luke 24 verse 45. The mind here is again nose. Why did the Lord Jesus open their nose? That they might understand the scriptures. Remember that we understand the Bible only after the Lord Jesus has opened our nose. As the nose is opened, the scriptures are understood. Hence, every time you read the Bible, you should pray to God, I humble myself as a child before you. I do not know, nor do I understand the meaning of this passage. Please give me light. It is not necessary for God to enable you to understand or possess the truth at the time of your reading mode. Sometimes when you are walking on the street, or working at some job, or getting ready for bed, or getting up from bed, God opens your nose and makes you understand the truth. Once he opens your nose, you get to know fuller and fuller. According to my own experience as well as the experience of many, God never reveals a truth in its entirety all at once. What we at first get from the reading of the scriptures is fragmentary, but gradually we come to know the whole truth of God. Take as an illustration the truth of authority. I know a man in the Lord who for four to five months was held to this one truth. God showed him increasingly the truth concerning authority as given in the Bible. 3. As to preaching, once I was asked if one should prepare for the preaching, my answer was that he should prepare every day. We must receive from God daily. When we are shown in our nose the truth which God gives to us in our spirit, we shall come to know, within a short or a long period, the whole truth. A person does not prepare for preaching in two hours. This will be useless. Many spiritual people are able to receive yearly from God great and systematic truth in all clearness. God shows these truths to their nurse that they may nourish both themselves and other people. The content of the mind finally, concerning progress in this matter of the renewing of the mind, there is a part for you to do as well as a part for God to do. Let us remember that each and every renewed mind must be put under self-control. One must learn to start and to stop thinking. He should be able to control himself in a most natural fashion. Do not let outside thought rule over you. If so, your thought is sick. This is not meant to mean, of course, that you should analyze your thoughts. For if you do, you will suffer intense headache. Control of thought should be done naturally, just as closing and opening one's eyelids requires no thinking nor command, but is done quite naturally. At first there will need to be some effort, but later on it can be done very naturally. We must control our thoughts, yet it should be accomplished naturally. Let us not analyze our thought lest we fall into pain and danger. This is something to be noticed.